Another relation that we're going to look at is the sideways parabola. So, learning goal, we're going to recognize and determine the features of y squared equals x, including the parabolic shape and the axis of symmetry. By the end of it, we want to be able to recognize the shape of the sideways parabola and understand the domain and range. And we also want to be able to complete the square. Again, similar to the circle, we're completing the square, that's our algebraic technique, to put the parabola, the sideways parabola, into its general form. So we'll just have a look at its shape. Okay, I've got y squared equals x. And you, we know this parabolic behavior of y equals x squared, but when we take y squared equals x, we put it on its side for some apparent reasons. So if you consider x being equal to one, x being equal to one, okay? The corresponding y points you could have for that, you could have a negative one squared would give you one, and one squared would give you one. So that's why you've got one and negative one to give you corresponding points, which gives you that relation. You do a similar thing. Okay, if you took the point four, I know that at least for y, y would have to be negative two squared and it would have to be two squared to give me that corresponding point four. So that's what we've got. Two, negative two and positive two to give me those corresponding points, and that more or less defines this relation. All right, again, there is a general form and there is a guide for sketching this. So we've got y minus d squared is equal to a minus c squared. This guy here, this is our dilation factor. All right, and we've got what we call a vertex, uh, which is essentially the turning point of the the sideways turning point, which occurs at C, D, okay? X, then Y. C is in the X transformation. D is in the Y transformation, so C, D. How we sketch it is we identify the vertex, find the intercepts, look at the long-term behavior, and then sketch it. All right, so we've got an example like this here. I know straight away vertex, I can read it off. It occurs at the point one, two. All right, and then I need to find some intercepts. Okay, we know how to find intercepts, should be experts by now. X intercept, set. So we get an x intercept of x equals 3. We can do a similar thing. y intercept 2 squared. That's equal to 2 outside of negative 1. Okay, so that's y minus 2 is equal to negative 2 squared. And then we ask, well, does this have any solutions? Can we solve it? Okay, and well, we'd have to square root both sides to get rid of that squared. So we'd have y minus 2 is equal to the square root of negative 2. Okay, bum bum, problem. Not possible. Therefore, no y intercepts. Okay, so we've got our x and y intercepts. We've found our vertex point there. Now we want to look at the long term behavior. That's based on this guy here. The long term behavior. Hence, a is greater than zero, then as x goes along this axis going towards infinity i know that it's going to spring off sideways accordingly so i'm going to have y shooting off towards plus minus infinity as that sideways parabola so that gives me and then okay now i just need to sketch and label axis put things on Okay, so first things first is that vertex point that occurs when x is one, y is two, okay, this is our vertex, 1.2. And we have got an x-intercept at x equals three. So right down here. Okay, I, might, I might do that in yellow, right down here. That's point three, zero. And I know the behavior is shooting off as x goes to infinity, y goes to plus minus infinity. So it does that behavior. Then we kind of think, ah, oh, 
That's why we didn't get any Y intercepts because where the vertex was, the long-term behavior shoots away from that Y axis. Okay, so it kind of goes along up like this, down through this point and down along there. So it goes along here and there. Okay, and our, our relation is Y minus two squared is equal to two X minus one. Uh, sort of, this one's here, show that y squared minus 6y plus 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. Put it, show that thing in the form, so in its general form, and then state the domain, range, and the vertex. In order to do this, we need to be able to complete the square. So I'm just going to y squared minus 6y, and I'm going to ping all this stuff over onto the other side equal to negative 2x minus 3. And I'm just going to complete the square here, so I need to halve that b term and square it, plus and minus it, so that I can, so that's the y minus 3 squared minus 3 squared equals negative 2x minus 3. And so when we rearrange it, we can really complete the square, put all the stuff onto the other side, so that we all we really we're almost done. We just need to factorize this other side here. Squared is equal to bring out that negative two because x needs to be positive, x minus three. Okay, so here then we can state off what we've got. A is equal to negative two, c is equal to three, and d is equal to three. So then we can start stating stuff. We've got a vertex at the point three, three. And then I need to consider long-term behavior. I need to think, what is this going to look like? Okay, because I need to highlight a domain and a range. And so I might just do a little miniature. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to visualize it. So our vertex occurs at the point three, three. And since, since our A value here, is negative, that means the long-term behavior of this is gonna go along like this. So it's gonna have that behavior and that's gonna help us determine well, what is the domain and range? Well, I would say that the domain is a bit restricted here. Those are my input values. I will be able to put in from negative infinity all the way up to three, including it, because that's all the way up to this vertex point. Negative infinity, blah, 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 blah all the way up to three inclusive. We've also got the range, well this behavior will go down along forever and this behavior will go up along forever, so the range will be negative infinity to positive infinity. Alright, so again referring back, learning goal, success criteria, are we able to recognize it? Can we determine features? Can we complete the square to put it in its general form? Okay, and can we look at domain and range? A domain and range and highlight those for the sideways problem.